Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. In this video I'm TIG welding up a load leveling fixture and I'm doing the welding for a machine shop. So they did all the cutting and machining and drilling and it's for another company that he's doing work for. Uh, and so it's done per a drawing, per a blueprint, and there are welding symbols involved and there are some mistakes. So I thought, well, it's a, that's pretty common stuff that you run across. Let's talk about that and maybe it'll make this more educational and more interesting. So we're going to work through that. And at the very end of the video, I'll recommend a couple of books that I've found really helpful in uh, helping you to learn how to read drawings and interpret welding symbols. All right, let's do it. This little project is a really good example of why I like doing welding work for machine shops. It's pretty common that I'll get a sack of parts like this and all I got to do is minor cleanup and do a little review of the drawing, assemble, and weld. So I'm doing a little flap disc action today. A lot of this stuff is cold rolled, but it's going to weld a little bit better if I shine it up a little bit. I'm using Walther Surface Technologies uh, flap discs and all I'll say is they're probably the best ones I've ever used. The mill scale on the square tubing like this really got to be removed if you're TIG welding. makes a big difference. Let's take a look at the, at the drawing weld symbol and then I'll show the weld symbol on the part also. Up in the top left corner there you see the welding symbol that calls for a quarter inch dimension fillet weld to be welded all the way around. And that's a problem. Here it is on the actual physical part. It's a problem because you can't get a quarter inch fillet weld all the way around. So what do you do in this area over here where the it's flush? There's no room for a fillet weld. There are times, depending on how stringent the shop you're working in, how stringent the QC and inspection is, there are times when you'd have to get that drawing corrected in order to get the part bought off. I'm doing this for a machine shop. He's doing it for another customer. I know both machine shop and customer, so I know that it's not going to be necessary. I know the intent. They just want it welded all the way around, and they didn't really know what symbol to put on there. So basically, I'm just going to knock a bevel on that and you know and weld it now here's what here's what the corrected drawing might look like uh, where the two symbols instead of one so there's one symbol with with uh, angled arrow lines you know pointing to three sides showing a quarter inch fillet weld and then a separate symbol showing a groove weld with an eighth of an inch groove preparation on there that might work but either way I know they wanted to weld it all the way around so you can see I knocked a bevel on there so I'll sink a good weld in there and I'll get a fillet weld on three sides and it will be lovely right, let's take a look at the other weld there now the weld symbol on the drawing looks something like this and so that is a groove weld a bevel groove weld it's got a quarter inch dimension which means a quarter inch depth of preparation if it was in parentheses if the quarter inch was in parentheses that would mean a quarter inch weld size but this is not in parentheses, so it, it means preparation, depth of the, of the bevel, basically. And so I've got a bevel on both sides because it's to be welded all the way around. Instead of, and actually, I've got a bevel on all four sides, on the ends and on both sides, because that's the only way to get a groove weld all the way around. The little circle there means weld it all the way around. So I'm going to kind of place everything and see what I'm up against here. And I can see right away it's going to be a little bit tight Get the torch head. In here for both welds so I'm going to go ahead and weld one of them to make it easy and then I'll only have one tight weld and I'm going to use some aluminum blocks that I just have laying around I save uh, these are just scrapped machining parts and uh, they come in really handy I want to be using about 170 amps sometimes full pedal sometimes not and a number six gas lens cup stubby gas lens kit I'll talk about that just briefly uh, along the way a number six will give me plenty of plenty of gas coverage here and I'm not really worried about discoloration at all because it's carbon steel and the parts are going to be painted. This is sped up like 4x here and I'm, I'm going to put two weld passes on there because it's a fairly deep groove and it is it is sort of a lifting fixture and uh, don't want to be shy on the weld. What I'm hoping is that it will draw just a little bit. The weld will shrink and it will open up a little bit so that when I weld the inside, it'll pull it back. Generally speaking, when you weld the outside of a 90 degree angle like that, it won't draw much at all. This, this weld, though, will pull it, pull it closed a little bit. So I could have it clamped down all nice and tight, but I'm going to put one weld in there and I'm just going to try to keep it about flush because there's a piece of a uh, 
a nylon insert that's going to get put in there and don't want they don't want any weld in that area so we'll center up this piece now and get it square now in a minute I'm going to show you how weld metal pulls you can see that it's a little bit off square there's a little bit of light at the bottom of the combination square there and so this is where I need to put a tack to pull it that way and when I put one little tack on there it just always always amazes me especially when I'm able to watch it here in slow motion it always amazes me how much weld metal pulls so as that weld metal solidifies watch how much it pulls but then it goes back a little bit it's just a it's always a mystery you, you, you need to learn certain things, but you always need to be prepared to be surprised, too. All right, so I'm going to get a weld on all four sides, just a very small tack. I'm kind of going to have to compensate and know that it's going to draw just a little bit in the direction of the weld, where I put the weld. So by the time I get four tacks on there and get it all squared up, it'll, it'll be good enough. Now this is where I'm going to have to extend the electrode out. Right here, this is a number 7 cup that I have on there, but I'm going to go to a 6. And this is what I'm talking about when I say stubby gas lens. This just makes the torch much smaller and lets you extend the electrode out with really good gas coverage. Lets you extend the electrode out a lot farther than you could without a gas lens. And sometimes you need that. So I'm having to get all kind of crazy torch angle here and then come at it from both sides. And then for the outside welds here, I, I put the electrode a, no, a more normal extension, like around three-eighths or half an inch. I had it out there dang near three-quarters of an inch, or at least five-eighths. All right, the other end is going to look something like this. So I need to get everything cleaned up where all the welds are. And this particular radius piece here required a bevel on both sides. So the weld symbol on the drawing looks something like this. Again, welded all the way around with a groove weld with an eighth inch dimension. That's only a quarter inch thick, so if I bevel it from both sides, that means I'm beveling it all the way to a point. And since it's a, a weld all the way around symbol, I actually need to extend the bevel out another quarter inch or so, so that I can sink it all the way around. All right, so let's get tacks on that end of it now. Just, just a couple of tacks. Again, I'm going to weld... The, the outside of the 90 degree angle there in hopes that it will pull just a little bit so that when I weld the inside it will wind up being 90 degrees. You might be wondering why the radius on that thing. It's just this thing is going to lift a, some kind of round part and the part is only going to weigh about 100 pounds to 150 pounds. Still, still don't want anything, you know, to, to break or drop, but that's the reason for that radius piece. It's going to catch the lip of a round part. Another area where I have to extend the electrode quite a bit to get in there. This wasn't quite as tight as the other one just because that radius piece is not as tall. I get a little bit more favorable angle, but still extend the electrode out a lot more than I would normally. That's a good 5 eighths of an inch at least. Still getting good coverage. And for the last piece, this is where the, the shackle goes. i got to knock that weld reinforcement down because it extends past that. I'm going to get it fairly close and get one small tack there and then square it up and get a tack on the other end. And what I like to do on something like this is I like to weld those ends up before I ever start welding the long runs. And watch what I do here. I'm, I'm welding back and forth so I don't draw it in one particular direction on the ends there. Then I can do what I want here on these long runs and it won't draw much at all. Upcoming is a clip that I, I pulled from a previous video very similar fixture, but it, the shot came out so good that I kind of had to include it. Same kind of weld. Let it cool for just a little while and then come back and weld the other side. Looks, you know, pretty much the same deal. 
slightly oxidized so it's not welding as clean. And that's a wrap. So this is one end of the fixture where a pen goes in once they get it on the round part. And the other end looks like this. Got a little load leveling adjustment there. And some nylon inserts are going to put it, be put in there on that radius part and the other end to avoid metal to metal contact. All right, here's the, the recommended books I was talking about. First one is Blueprint Reading for Welders. This is very common in technical schools. Probably the most thorough one that I have used. Uh, this is the fourth edition. I've had it for a long time. I would recommend getting the latest edition. I think that it's up to the ninth edition now. The reason is because you might need to know some of the things that have come along recently, like ISO standards that are being adopted in certain industries and certain shops. A second supplemental book would be this one that I received from the Lincoln Foundation recently, and I've, I've had a chance to look through it here over the past few days, how to read shop drawings with special reference to arc welding. So it's really geared toward welding, about welding processes and inspection methods and things like that. I wouldn't say this would be a good standalone necessarily, but definitely a good supplement. All right, well, thanks so much for your time. I'd be happy if you'd visit my store at weldmonger.com. That's how I support these videos. Thank you.